So um, today we'll be looking at chapter four of the Mashin Shining book um, by Hadley Weekend, and it's going to be the case study on ER injuries. So for us to be able to, and the reason why we're doing this is because it's more like a case study to help us um, go through most of the things we've seen in chapter one, two, three. And um, to begin this uh, book, we would have to like load them three packages, uh, shiny, room, and then tidyverse. And um, we're loading shiny for the obvious, obvious reason to be the web app, and then room to be able to access our data, tidyverse to be able to manipulate the data. So let's go into the data proper. I'll be using more of the, um, the text itself. I also, I know that there is a book, the book club uh, book is also available here. And I know we might have checked that already, but I'll be using, I'll be going back and forth though, using both of them. So um, what's the data about? So we are spreading this data by the National Electronic Injury Surveillance System. And they cover um, the accident reported from a sample of hospitals in the US. So um, for every accident, the data we have is on the, the, the we have about three data sets there. The injuries data set, uh, population, and um, and the product. So um, we have um, variables of the data to be variables in the data set to be date, age, sex, race, body parts, diagnosis, and then location, as well as the primary product and the brief history of how the accident occurred. And further, we have a weight attribute for an estimate, for an estimation of how many people, how many people the current case represents if the data set was scaled to the US population. So that kind of like help us understand, okay, what if we scaled it to the US population, what will um, this accident, um, what would like be the um, number of possible persons that might have had this um, accident? And then to the main data, I'd like us to just go back to the text itself. I kind of feel much more comfortable using the text directly since it contains many of the things would be um, needed to talk about. So I had uh, quite a, I had a challenge initially when I was trying to load the data thanks to Wankless, who is on this call today, who actually helped out um, resolving that. And also John actually came and um, told us why that was possibly a challenge. And I think is this point here where we have this master is all to be mean now, and that'll make it easy for you to access all the data using this um, these lines of code here. So um, the main data sets we're using is injuries and has about 50,000 observations and then 10 variables, which uh, include um, the dates, the edge, the sex race, and everything written there. And the, the data was like, the data was kind of like um, described to a, a, a level, like the um, each variables was described, okay. Uh, um, we can see from here that um, the, the, the treatment dates is the dates, uh, the person was in the hospital, not necessarily the dates when the accident occurred. And um, we have other, um, the age, the sex, race, the body part, the diagnosis, the product code, um, the product code. And that's the primary product associated with the injury, then the ways, like I have mentioned earlier, the narrative. So um, then we talk about the product, another data set in the, um, in, in that we'll be considering in this um, web app we're building today, in this case study. Uh, we have the product code and then the title. So this is more like a, a data set that just tells us more about um, the product code. Like uh, if four six four is knife and uh, not elsewhere classified, and possible for tableware and accessories, and um, we have the population to be um, telling us um, the number of persons that are male or female at a particular in a particular age group. I think um, for the zeros, I mean, I think this means um, newborns, and then um, one means um, one year old, um, one year old persons, male or female, and um, I think that's that. Then for the exploration, so to begin with. Um, the um, author of this book kind of made it easier, make it, made it easy by just going through data, like just wanting to see what, what is there. And it just filtered and checked, okay, what's going on if we check the injuries and we check um, where the product code is 649, um, how many persons um, or how many um, rows, like how many um, rows of data do we have for that? And we always come up with something. and. The exploration continued in that, and this particular system is actually toilet. So, how many um, injuries possibly occurred in that located in, in in the toilet? So, we'll be able to like okay, come up with okay, these are the numbers of people that had that um, challenge in, in the toilet or that injury in the toilet, and 
leave the auto window and so I can check out some other, um, do some other basic data manipulation and we can see how we can find out more information about the data by doing a count and then um, by location. And it did the same, the weight, the weight was based on the um, scaling of the population based on an estimate of the US population. And then this was sorted. So the same thing was done for body parts and the same thing was done for the diagnosis. And then um, the author was able to come up with some, with an idea of what the kind, the kind of plot he would want to have and that is like having a, a line plot, a line plot showing um, having um, the age on the x-axis and the estimated number of injuries. And this was also still differentiated based on um, the sex or the gender of the um, persons involved. And uh, we can see that um, initially there was, a, there, was a, um, there was a rise and then there was a drop which shows that um, there was an increase starting around, there was an increase particularly for women starting around middle age, then there was a decline at age 80. And, you know, this is because um, majorly, um, Bosch, most likely, this is just an assumption from the author, because that was what is suspected that since majorly boys were stand using the toilets and the increase for women is due to osteoporosis. So he was able to like come up with a possible pattern. Okay, let's see, let's do, um, do some other data manipulation and come up with something that um, could be the, the challenge why um, these things are, are going on here. And going back to this, I just want to see what is here. Okay, so I think I've talked about all this and um, okay. Okay, so the goal is just to build an app which outputs the tables and the plot for different products which the user selects. And so this like gives us an idea of, okay, this app we're building, it's just going to, um, we'll be able to select, um, user selected products and we have tables telling us, um, the tables telling us what really happened there and why, like giving us like a brief summary of what happened. And then we can have a plot that, um, um, create like a contrast between, okay, this is what happens for the male gender and this is what happens for the uh, female gender. So what's the prototype like? So let's go back to the book. So for the book, this is the prototype. And in the prototype, we have this, um, we have a, a fluid page and about three fluid rows. And each of this fluid row, we have, um, for the first fluid row, we have a select input. And this allows us to pick a code, uh, the product code. And let me just give them. Then for the second fluid row, we have um, three table um, outputs. Then the last part, we have the plot output. And this is for the UI side. Then for the server side, we have, um, since we've done a bit of the data manipulation, we have um, a reactive expression, a reactive, uh, a reactive um, code written to make it possible for us not to, um, not to like, um, replicate codes, writing the same thing over and over. And that is the um, the select select the selected and um, selected here, which is re repeated here as if as a, as a reactive expression, which is used to like um, plot make the table and also for the for the summary, sorry for the plot also, and that's what um, the reactive was also used to another reactive selected was also used to create the um, plot as a summary, sorry. Summary is another reactive created using selected. So you could actually use a reactive expression in another one to, you can actually use a reactive expression to create another one. And in that process, you have like a, a render plot made. And that's what gave us this false plot here, which is still like the rough thing, not yet polished. Um, giving us uh, the diagnosis. Okay, was it a laceration, was it? fracture and the number of the counts of um, persons that had that injury and the body parts which was affected um, the fingers the handle whatever part of the body then the location was it at home was it in an unknown place was it a sports center or and the, the likes like that so and what product exactly was used so when you click on the product that something happens in the in the data so let's 
So I would click here to check. I think I have one of them. Okay, so um, if I was to click any of these products, I would find out, okay, what happened? Dex, chest, and um, the diagnosis was as a higher level of laceration. And the body part that was mostly affected was the head, and it happened majorly at home. And this is what the plot looks like. So there was kind of a, a, a spike on number of injured persons between the age of, um, say, maybe um, this should be 0 to 12.5. If this is the mid, mid number, there was a spike here, and there was a decline. There was a spike initially here, sorry, and there was a decline here. And like, like that. So we could. And if we click any other products in, in the course of that, we could find a different others not stated. Uh, possibly the person does want to state the body part that was affected here. And uh, the, sorry, diagnosis, sorry, diagnosis here. Um, body part head, same thing again. So let's see if we, let's try something else and see, do we get something else? Yes. So actually we are getting a reaction. We're getting something different in the process. Sorry, um, in case you want to stop me or say anything, or you want to contribute to something, please can actually just, um, on mute and say something or ask any question, please feel free to do so. So I don't feel um, all alone here. And um, it's more of a discussion, necessarily one person just talking. So it could be more, it could be much, uh, it could be fun. Um, I didn't take a look very closely, but um, do you know, do you know why some of the ends are not uh, integers like why 0.65 at the end okay let me go back to the i think it should be uh miss princess yeah okay um does anybody want to answer that i why think it's the person waiting because the weights uh, are in uh, are float numbers okay so um, that's actually the reason, because the weights are actually good numbers. And um, since it's, let me go back to the code so that I can show that. Okay, so, the weights. Yeah, so this is. Yeah. In the summary. The summary. I think it's there in the summary reactive, yeah, where yeah. they multiply it by one e power four. Yes. Yeah, so this is actually the part where um, that happened. And um, this is what we and what it is. This should be good. Okay. So um, oh, is there okay. any other person who has a question or anyone wants to say something? Please, uh, it's much more interesting when we have it as a discussion than just one person just talking through. Okay. So if there's no question, I'll just continue from there then. Um, so we just checked the first prototype and we've seen what um, the uh, code produced and um, we, okay, so let me go to the next part, which is polishing the table. So if, if we look at this, um, if we look at the, the output of this, well, let's say the, the shiny web app produced, we notice that um, there's this, um, the tables are not regular, but they are different dimension, although both of them have the same number of columns, but the rows are actually um, different. And it would have been nicer if we could um, make them of same length, of, of same um, number, and uh, <clears throat> make the plots. And that would have been much more better. Well, that would have been better, sorry. And we'll go back and see how that can be done, uh, how we can actually polish the table. So we have the basic components working. And actually, this is the best way to build a Shiny app um, because you have to actually start from just coming up with something at first. Then in the process, you continue to build on it, then it gets better as you go along. So this time around, we are um, using these two functions here. And um, what exactly does these functions do? Um, one of the functions is to Okay, um, um, so we want to find out what exactly this guy does. So, um, okay, so that's because I don't have the library. Uh, I have not uploaded the package. Yeah, I should be tidy best. Uh, 
Okay. What will happen? Oh, I missed an R. Okay, okay so good. A lump together factor levels into order. So this like kind of like sums up after taking like the first set of numbers we want to use, the rest of the other things are just put together, put in an order, like a group, created a group, a group is created and it's labeled as orders. And then for the other one, I think that's uh, I think we already have this huge. It's F C T three. Yeah, this guy. Good. We had a factor level by first appearance frequency or numeric order. So what this guy actually does is um this is forced like terms to reorder the factor levels by first appearance frequency or by frequency or by the numeric order. So um going back to this, what was done here was it was ordered by the frequency, like a number of count. Then like for the that's for the um that's for the body parts are known because uh, if you look at others, others had higher numbers, but it was as I put at the last um, the last um, level. Yes, the last level. Okay, so back to this. Where did we stop? Yeah, polishing the table. So we just checked what this two function does. So factor lump puts the oh, um factor uh, factor in frequency factor in frequency. So this like puts in together the diagnosis, the baby diagnosis into about um into um like gives us a form of like an order the factor lump puts the last set into um the last set of factors or let me say last set of levels into one one um one level and we already we already stated explicitly that we want just five here and so we're grouping by diagnosis then we summarize as integer um some sum in the weight for um for the others and for the yeah, some in the weight. So from this, we have this particular um output, and this makes it like easy for us to like go back to the shiny app and recreate this same um output, thereby giving us the same number of the same dimension of um table output in the first in the second row of the shiny app. So if we would go back to our app. We would find that this is greatly improved already. This is greatly improved, and we have this now. And we can check that here. Well, let me just open this in another link then. Okay. So this is greatly improved, and it's far, it's better than what it was before. And this is it. This is it. So, and back to chapter four. And now, at this point, we want to ensure that um, okay. we want to ensure that okay. We just talked about polishing the table. Okay, so we want to ensure that um, we give the user a chance to plot data relative to ten thousand people or in absolute numbers. So. Um, remember the other time, uh, I think Trevin asked the question as regards the um, the fact that why do we have the um, the um, counts in dots something up in decimal points? Uh, so this time around, the reason why we have in rate versus count is there's a point where we have the absolute number, and there's a point where we have the other one, the other um, set of numbers that is a an estimated number based on the population of the United States. So. Um, and this time around, some part of the data was, um, some part of the code, sorry, was improved on, and that's the, um, and that's the, the server side. What was done this time around? We have the render plot to now have um, an if and else condition. Okay, if it is, um, the input is, is, um, is count, this time around, give us the plot for count. And if otherwise, give us that of rates. So let's see what this actually looks like in the in the plot. 
So now we can actually decide if we want counts or rates. So the first um, the first condition is if we if it um, if the user of the app says okay I want to see it in count, then the person will actually get the y axis in count. Then if the person clicks on I want to see it in rates, the person will get it in rates. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, good. So at this point, we we can this estimated number. That's the count, just an estimated number. But here we have this as the rate. That is um, injuries per ten thousand people. And um, oh wait, can you do that again? Okay, I'll go back there. So this is it. So if this is count, this is what count looks like. Okay. Yeah, I had it, it, the, it, it switched so fast, I didn't even notice it. Oh, yeah. sorry for that. It was fast. So no worries. I, yeah, yeah okay, so, no worries. Okay, so um, are there any questions for this part? Or is there anything we want to discuss about this? Because I noticed that there's kind of a change in what the data looks like. Does anybody want like, Give us like a brief um, reason why possibly the, the changes. Why is it different? Like why is it so different? Anybody want to talk about that? Yes. Anyone? Trevin, Whitefish, uh, Media. Okay, so I think it's just me to continue. Okay. Um, the UI side was um, made, there was an, an inclusion. We also have been able to select between rate or count. Something that had to be added to the um, the field row. Because uh, if we compare compare this to what we had the previous time, the first field row had just the products where we select um, the uh, the um, the level of the products, whichever um, product we want to consider. But now we have the um, the option for the y axis on the side here. And um, I think in our previous uh, discussion, I mentioned that um, we came to understand that um, the field rule has um, about, has like a total uh, measure of like 12. So you could like pick, um, you could like um, split it in, in, in sections, but it, it can go beyond, beyond 12. And this time around we have the, um, it should be um, eight and two here. So um, it could have, that means they could have um, been space for something else, but that would just take only two. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so I think we just completed that. So um, finally, at this point, the, um, now we want to button to sample an accident story related to the currently chosen product and display. So at this point, we want to know more about what happened. We want to be able to just click a button and get the story. Tell me a story. Like what's really going on? What happened for this to, uh, um, for, for um, what happened that, is, what results to this? What really happened? So, and in that process, we are able to add the, that part of the data in. I think that's the, this, Let's go back and see where that is in data. Okay, that's the injuries part. There is um, a part of the data that talks about the narrative, which is like a brief story about how the accident occurred. So now we are trying to put that into the data to give more context to what that data, uh, Shiny app. So we're about to put that into the Shiny app to like, give more context. Okay, why, how, why and how this, like how, the quick story of how the accident, how the accident occurred. So back to the narrative. So, uh, but this time around we are using Event Reactive and um, this is actually just possible to create a, to be able to, um, we are eventually active so that whenever the button is clicked, we can like get to like get the narrative. There is a based on what is written the code here. 
it pulls just the first um pulls the narrative just this particular um variable this colon but giving us just taking a sample just one one story per time so and tell me a story so when you click on this it tells you okay this is what happened okay food place for six year old man knife fell off plate and caught food so um with that one is able to like okay understand okay this is what happened and this is how it happened so let's see if we can get that to okay this is it so okay so this is that part where i can just click on rocks okay so um, my, okay so the more i click on tell me a story i get I get a um, 12 year old male goofing around with brother, putting him down, hit head on carpet floor. I don't know what DX means. So each time I click on tell me a story, I get another story. But well, all the stories are related to rugs or carpet. So let's try something else uh, basketball. Oh, great. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Did you know something about the plot? It's more like this are the age group that are kind of like actively involved in playing basketball, like just totally declined here. These people don't play basketball. So these are people that actually get the injuries. That's like something amazing about um, data um, visualization. Like you see like a bit of a story of what's going on and it's more of the male counterpart that gets injured. So a 15 year old Way male. More. Yeah. yeah. 15 year old male, the Zoom uh, stuff is not allowing me to read this part of the data. Okay, let me see if I can make this up. Okay, 15 year old male in gym at school playing basketball and someone pushed him, landed on back on floor. I don't know what the X means. Um, I think I there's think a lumbar diagnosis. I'm oh, not sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, can yeah. be diagnosis. <laughs> diagnosis. Yeah. Thank you for that, Lydia. Um, my. Okay. I think it's something. It's true. Maybe it's a medical term, but I guess it's a facial or lumbar strain that should be the back. So um, that's just beautiful. You, you get to see what's. Wow. The twin peak. Wow. So um, males really into football. Age. Wow. This is like maybe. Four to twenty. So you, just this part here. These guys are really active. And what happened? Thirteen year old he had during football game diagnosis CHI. I wonder what that is. So um, PT has re pain when taking deep breath as after football practice. Chest wall pain. Seventeen year old male. So it's like it makes it much more um interesting to like get a story. So a sample. So the sample is like a random a random um, generate it picks it it picks it randomly picks a, a narrative about that particular section we are looking into and gives us a, a story about okay what could have happened just what happened to one of these um injured persons in this situation and from there we are able to have an idea okay this is what happened and this is not what happened and that makes it much more um, interesting to know more about about it and um then we have some exercises i oh, think uh Yes, I mean, I, okay. I was thinking if we could, okay. uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen word cloud being used with uh, narratives and texts in R. So it will be more interesting, I think, if we could uh, uh, slice or or sample more than one uh, narrative and then maybe thirty or fifty rows for a specific uh, product and then uh, see which words uh, pop up most of the times in the word cloud okay um that's quite interesting so if it's yeah, going to be yeah. a word cloud, let me <laughs> it get... will be another another graph below the, the the two line graphs it will be another graph below it instead of okay. just a text a single let text. me go back to the ports you mean the graph will be somewhere around here or below here 
or should we make this, should this, instead of making this 12, should we make this six and have the word cloud here? Sure, sure, like, sure. Okay, so, uh, well, that would be interesting, but I really want to get a scope, like, if we're going to be putting that, like, why and how, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> if we are to get the word cloud for, like, say, some rows, would it be for a particular product code? And um, are we, like, trying to find out what particular, um, I'm just trying to figure out how that would come up, like, why that would be important and how, is this something we should dive into later on or would that be a project we could just do as a court? Maybe if anyone is interested, we could just see how that can be added to this. So I think we could still talk about that in the um, Slack channel. Uh, that would yeah. be a good um, discussion. Sure. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, is there anything I did not mention so far so good? Okay, this is actually the last row, the last new row that was included, the action button, then the text output. And we have this, then we have the exercises. And so uh, for the exercises, we just checked what factor infrequency in frequen in would mean and factor of what it's actually meant, then I think we can actually check out the exercises and um, also um, check out past um, court videos. And then whoever is interested in the workout thing, we could um, talk about it on Slack, on Slack channel and um, possibly just do something beautiful and um, see what it looks like. I think that's a very good way to, um, to learn about the, um, the process of building complex shiny app. And um, in summary, um, we've seen the basics now and we'll be going into the next part of the book. And Trevin will be doing the honors of taking us through chapter five, which will be quite an, which will be an amazing discussion that I would look, I look forward to. And um, on this note, I, I um I would say we are done. But if there's any question, someone wants to say something that uh, I would just want to listen. And then um, if there is no one, um go in the call. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, so I signed up to do chapter seven. Uh, okay. I potentially could do chapter six. I want to get a bit caught up before I say I'll do chapter six. But I should be ready to go for chapter seven. Okay. Uh, you remember, Lydia, you mentioned about how, how are your exams? Oh, how are you, you done with your exams? I think you said something about you writing exams. Exams done. Before. Yeah, I passed. <laughs> or oh, great. Got, I did really good on like the that one final. So, yeah. Just waiting for all the other grades to come in but yeah oh. it's i'm this semester is done i only have two more classes for next semester and then i will have my degree and i'm very happy oh. about that well congratulations yeah. in advance yeah, well congratulations. thank you <laughs> thank you okay so um chapter five is on workflow and trevor will be taking that so um lydia said she if she is able to do the read Read, if she's able to read up on um, chapter six, she would take it. And if not, there's no problem. It's more of a discussion. And um, if there's a part you don't get, or there's a part you didn't read, um, you didn't you maybe you're able to complete the reading because we all are meant to actually read each chapter before coming for the discussion or the meeting. So it becomes easier. Like we could just um, okay, I think this is what this part is saying. I think this is what this part is saying, and we're able to like um. um have a very, very um, fruitful discussion. So on this note, I want to say thank you for making it here. And, um, you know, uh, today is the semi-final match of Argentina, Croatia. So um, I would, okay, there's a chat. Someone dropped a message. Thank you. Okay, I want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I want to say yeah. thank you, everyone, for coming up. Okay, right click, you want to say something? Yeah, just to say thank you so much for the session. It's been interesting. I'm just uh, getting my feet into shiny, and I hope... Uh, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning quite well. Okay, you're welcome, uh, Trevin. 
Are you still there? Yep, I'm. I'm still here. Okay, so we look forward to seeing you uh, next week. It's kind of dark here, that's why I didn't turn on my video. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week, and we hope to um, learn from you, even as we would also be contributing. I want to say thank you so much for your time at this point. Um, if there's no questions, no more contribution, and we're not seeing any other thing, I think we can just go ahead and prepare to support whichever country we're supporting in the semi final. Bye. Okay. Goodbye. Thank everyone. you. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Bye.